you to go home and I want you to have a wonderful Sunday evening together as a family. If you can just go home and visit and do something a little different than you normally do on a Sunday night, then that would be good, okay? Don't just go home and turn the TV on and veg out. Try to have a little bit of a conversation with someone that you love. All right? Try it. It'll be good. I'm going to read this verse. One that you know. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. Now, let, let me confess to you that I'm not going to be con uh, contextual tonight. It's just I'm, I'm grabbing hold of this verse because it, it, it's sort of a subject. Actually, what the context here about this is, is that Samuel is looking to anoint a new leader for Israel, and it's a time where all of Jesse's boys come up before him, and uh, here's what it says. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as a man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now that's a very well-known passage of scripture. Now since uh, Karen Peck is going to be here next week and have the service in the morning and then the youth have the evening service, I thought since uh, it's Valentine's Day and I'm not going to get to speak about Valentine's, I just kind of hit you with a little Valentine's thought tonight. How about that? And you know, you can't, you can't you can't go very far into Valentine's Day without knowing that it has something to do with the heart. Right? Red hearts all over the place, candy hearts, hearts here and hearts there, and a heart right there. See that? Valentine greetings and a big red heart. And of course, it's a heart because the heart is the seat of a man's affection, and Valentine's Day is that day where all of us guys at the last minute get a card and a box of chocolate and a rose and go home and say, Hi, honey, I love you. What's for supper? And, uh, you know, or oh, whatever. I'm playing on the, you know, joking, but there's a bit of sarcasm in that because a lot of it's true. And uh, because it's a day of expressing love, it's a day of the heart, Valentine's Day. That's what we know about it. But I want to ask you something. Consider this. Consider your heart. What if, what if for one day Jesus were to be you? He wakes up in your bed. He walks in your shoes. He lives in your house. Your schedule becomes his schedule. Your boss becomes his boss. Your husband or your wife becomes his husband or his wife. Your pain, his pain. Nothing changes except he becomes you. In other words, the situation doesn't change. It's just Jesus becomes you. Your health doesn't change. Your schedule doesn't change. Your circumstance doesn't change. Your problems don't change. Nothing changes. It's just that Jesus becomes you. There's only one difference Your heart, your heart takes a day off, and his heart becomes your heart. In other words, your life would be led by the heart of Jesus. His love directs your behavior, his passions drive your desires. His priorities dictate your actions. His pureness drives your decisions. Would there be
be a difference? notice a difference about you? Would your family notice a difference? Well, I want to tell you this. That's exactly what God wants. you to change your body, the color of your hair, your house, your car, your manners, polite. You got to fit in some stratification level somewhere. The world wants you to move up the ladder. The world wants you here. The world wants you to change in all kinds of ways. But God wants to give you a new heart. God wants you to be happy with who he's created you the uniqueness of you but he wants to put the heart of Jesus in you what a valentine's gift he has given to us what a valentine's gift we can give to the world and that's what he wants us to be he wants us to be the valentine to the world he wants us to love the unloved. To befriend the friendless. He wants you to break out of your comfort zones. And touch those that maybe you don't want to touch. See, it takes a new heart to do that. The world runs in the same circles does the same things and everybody gets in these little pigeonholes in these little groups and then their stratification levels they're marked by certain automobiles you drive and certain places you live and so on and so forth but the son of man had no place to lay his head and uh, I read somewhere in the Bible where and the multitudes followed him think of that <coughs> have you ever thought that you God wants you and that you are his valentine to the world Jesus in you in fact there's some questions raised in the Bible that goes like this Ask the question. How can how can they believe unless they hear? And how can they hear unless someone's sent? Pretty good question. You don't get to be a Valentine's by osmosis. Now I have a valentine here and she didn't get to be my valentine by osmosis. I made an absolute concrete decision. I took a look at her and I said, ooh la la. And uh, and pardon the expression, but I'm trying to get a point across. God 
looks at the world and says, ooh, la, la. <laughs> oh. You know the person you can't stand? He loves. What if your heart just took a day off? Would there be a difference? Yes, there would be a difference, wouldn't there? Lord, we thank you that we're not what we used to be. We're not all that we want to be, but God, we thank you we're not what we used to be. Amen. Be a valentine. Okay, be a valentine to the world. Your boss, quit thinking about him in a worldly way. Some people's marriages are less than what God would have them. And I know that some marriages can get tough. I know that. But nothing's impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. The job you have, the people you work with, you don't know who I work with. You don't know what they're like. No, I don't. But I know that if Jesus went there on a job, he'd make a difference. You're not where you are to complain. You're where you are to make a difference. Now, in the house, when she's my valentine, makes a difference right so that's it be a valentine to the world love the world plenty of sin out there don't major on the sin don't curse the darkness light a light it's easy to curse the darkness I, I have a natural affinity for it. It comes easy. I'm gifted. Been gifted all my life. Even before I was ever saved, I could curse the darkness. Everything's dumb, cheap, stupid, and ugly. If they'd listen to me. Well, it's enough of that. Okay, let's go home. Oh, y'all forgot to greet one another. Take some time and greet one another.